You may have seen the title of this video and be asking yourself, why? I ask myself the same question every single day of my life. You may also be thinking, oh, another BTS video. So BTS's new album came out recently and along with it, of course, came their new music video, Boy With Love. I love the theater, it's so pretty. This color palette is my favorite with V. Me. What could I possibly do that has not been done by literally every other person? I love to craft. I don't know how to do anything else. Honestly, who needs a $5 million set when you can make your own in a shoebox? I'm not gonna say this is like a tutorial or a DIY because nobody else is gonna do this. I don't really do proportions. I just kind of look at things and I guess. So here's a sneak peek. That's all you get, so let's get started. Or you can skip to the end and look at it, I don't care. The actual theater is pretty much in an art deco style. It's very geometric and it has some pretty bold colors on it. It's orangey yellows and then blues on the inside. And I went ahead and grabbed a screenshot from later on, a more like fantasy, not to call them out, but it is not accurate. <laughs> the back pillars are missing, all of the posters are missing. So I'm sure nobody noticed that, but I noticed. I started out by making the structure first. I used cardboard and foam core. Quite a few different kinds of cardboard. I used a lot from pizza boxes, which is like the thinner cardboard, and then I used the thicker cardboard that like a package would come in as well. I started off making the big orange section. I made that out of cardboard first, and then the middle pieces I made out of thinner cardboard. <laughs> So yesterday I finished this and all of these, they took forever, it was awful. I cut out these side pieces. I made the geometric sort of pieces that are on the side of the orange thing. These are not good terms, these are just random words. Out of foam core. If you don't have a cutting mat, you just cut on the rug. Should I? Probably not. And then I cut a little strip and you just kind of peel it off. This would slot in like this. My philosophy is it's fine if it looks really bad from the back. It stays together and it looks fine on the outside. It's good enough for me. It looks like a mess, but um, should I be eyeballing this? Probably not. The question is, how many times will I sing this song while making this? <laughs> I think Home is my favorite song on the album. Guess what? I just wanna go home. I think I've decided. It's okay, I burn myself all the time. I think once I start getting the awning on, it's gonna be too difficult to paint inside. Am I saying that because it's logical or am I saying that because I wanna avoid it more? Avoid your problems, friends. I'm also gonna leave the cardboard as the texture because the wall actually does have some texture. Just don't mind my crusty, disgusting paintbrushes. I painted that light blue. I was gonna do like a full wall and I probably should have, but um, it's too late now. So I'm just gonna stick a little piece in here. And then there's two strips of darker blue in there. My heart should be well oh, yeah. Okay, so the walls are kind of shiny because I think they're tiled. Mod Podge, it says matte, it's really not matte. It literally probably looks like I did nothing. My palette is indeed quite dirty. That's just how I live my life. Just gonna look at this really intensely. The overhang was very difficult. I had to figure out how it would slot in with the top pieces and the rest of the building structure, which was very confusing. I really don't actually know how I figured it out. Your guess is as good as mine. Day three, let's do this. So this is where we're at right now. Yeah, you got the basic structure down pretty well. The overhang, I made it out of cardboard at first and then I covered it with bristol board actually. There's a lot of rounder edges and bristol board is a lot more flexible so you can make round shapes that look a little bit cleaner. 
I think it's time for a dance break. <laughs> Today, we're gonna do so much. I said that yesterday, but then I wasted most of the day making these. And then I decided that like, I kind of hated it. So <laughs> I ended up just having to do it again. I'll be so happy when I'm done with this archway. <gasps> I need to make this overhang part for the bottom. I had big sheets of Bristol board. I needed big sections that wouldn't have any seams. What's your go-to pickup line? Hey girl, I hear you're good with a ruler. Oh my, oh! That's my new pickup line, apparently. And on the bottom, I painted in the grid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now I'm going to paint on some of the lights, the ones that are paneled. Ignore that it's being held up by a single bottle of Elmer's glue. My life. Look at this bad boy. There's a really good section at the beginning that shows you the ticket booth pretty distinctly. So I use that for reference. I made the ticket booth out of cardstock. If you're thinking, wow, it looks like chaos, you're correct. I'm armed with my tiniest brush, barely even a brush. We're gonna try and paint ticket on here. I didn't get the font of the ticket exactly correct, but I was working very small, so. Varnish the window part real quick so that it actually looks shiny. So tell me, hi, 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 hi. You know how there's all those people that are making crafts with like these beautiful white tables? I would get paint all over. So we get newspaper with paint all over it. The two pieces on the side have stripes down them that are like orangey. Then I made the persona sign. I ended up drawing lines kind of like, you know, those cursive charts that I like kindergarten. I started off by drawing out the lettering. I probably should have just like, I don't know, printed this, traced it, but I just freehanded it. I guess it's not that bad. <laughs> not that good either. And then I painted that. Do you know all those videos and they do it in like one stroke in about five seconds? This feels like like the dollar store version of that. I had to make the outside so that it was three-dimensional. Cut out strips of cardstock. I held the strip and marked how long each piece of the letter was and I attached it with hot glue. It's a very thin surface that you're applying it to. This actually turned out a lot better than I expected. It has a support frame on the back. I knew part of it had to be pretty stiff, so I decided to make the pieces that attach to the overhang toothpicks. I have no idea where that just went. Well, I did the side pieces out of hard stock. This is the first thing that I've made on this that I think has turned out really cool. I also made the doorways. Or it's not quite proportionate, but at this point, honestly, I don't really care. Cut out a piece of card stock and then I attached tin foil to it. And I added a little tiny piece of red ribbon. There are also a bunch of circular lights. I punched out a bunch of circles and then I went in with the hot glue gun and put dots of glue on them so that they're sort of like raised snow globe-esque <laughs> shapes. I honestly have no idea what day it is anymore. Nothing's attached. I have to make the pillar still. I made the pillars out of cardstock because it's pretty flexible so I could make it into a tube. You may be asking yourself, when do you know if the hot glue is cool enough to spread with your finger? I don't know. Sometimes I burn myself. So tell me, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I just painted them the same color as the outside. And then at the bottom of the pillars, there's a little trim. 
In the actual video, there aren't like a lot of shots of the ground. So I snuck through a bunch of like the behind the scenes. So at first I was just gonna paint the cardboard and I did that and then I just didn't like it. So I took another piece of Bristol board and just glued that on top. There's two thin rows of a pink color and then the rest of it is like this weird dirty sand color. After that, I just kind of aged it. Then I started making some of the more detailed pieces. The details are really where it starts to come together for sure. There are a bunch of Singing in the Rain posters that are hanging around the theater. I went into Photoshop and color corrected and sized how big I needed the posters to be. There's one bigger one and then there's five smaller ones. The one on the outside on the left side has a border around it, painted a bunch of strips and then glued those on. Blessed with a lens flare. How heavenly. So here are all of the pieces we're gonna assemble. I'm ready. Oh god, I'm a mess. might know this theater better than BTS does and they were actually there. I wanted to do more and have like characters or something but I didn't know how to do that in a way that would be actually worth doing. I feel like working on this was like working on my life's masterpiece. I ignored everything for like a week. I didn't talk to anybody. I am so sorry if any of you are watching this. It was a really good way for me to analyze the production design. I think it was relatively close to turning out like it was in the video. So if BTS is in the market for a miniature for their next music video, hit me up. Um, thanks. <laughs>